Welcome to this video on data warehousing. My name's Andy Wicks and in this program I'm just going to give you a quick overview, a quick summary of what data warehousing is and why it's used. So let's get started. First of all I'd like to introduce you to the two people who got data warehousing going. The first is a chap called Bill Inman, born in 1945 and got his degree from Yale before moving on to New Mexico University to get his Master's in Computing. And he had an idea. He'd seen that all databases, to be proper databases, had to be in third normal form. But he had an idea. Maybe in some situations, using third normal form wouldn't necessarily be best. So he wrote a paper about denormalizing data in some situations. And this was taken up by Dr. Ralph Kimball, born in 1944, with a doctorate from Stanford, and he commercialized the idea of data warehouses. So, let's start at the beginning. Data warehousing is not in third normal form, hence its nickname, Big Data, because anything that's not normalized will also be much bigger than a fully normalized database. The database should be denormalized in a particular way into second normal form. We're going to look at how that works in general in a few slides further on. This means that you get data redundancy and that means that you need more storage and that means that you can get at the data more quickly and more quickly is what data warehousing is all about. The purpose of a data warehouse is to provide aggregate data totals, averages, trends and so on which is in a suitable format for decision making. The decision maker isn't interested in whether this particular customer has paid their bill or whether that particular wine was bought on that particular day. They're interested in the general trends, so they can see where the efforts of the company can be best used. So how do you go about creating a data warehouse? Well, let's go through this diagram and start on the left. You have the operational systems within an organisation. Marketing, sales and so on. And each of these will have their own properly normalised database. You don't want to mess with the operational systems that are already functioning. So what you do is you take copies of their information and put it into a staging area. And what you do with the data in this staging area, well, that's an entirely separate piece of work. So you're not messing with the day-to-day -day running of the company. In the staging area, you can look at creating the data in a particular way now, I'll show you this in just a moment. And you can make sure that all the data is in the same format. And you'd think, well, it's coming from databases. Surely it's going to be in the same format. Well, not necessarily. In some departments, the names of customers might be all in one field. In others, you have forename, surname, and title. You might have data in pounds in one table and in dollars in another. So we need to work out how we're going to get all of this into one logical framework. It goes through the integration layer and flows into the data warehouse in a format that is standard across all the data in that data warehouse. So, for example, we would use all pounds or all dollars or have every name as forename, surname and title. The data warehouse will then be huge. We've taken the data from across the organization and put it all into one large database in second normal form. But we're going to have to answer questions for specific individuals. The director of marketing will have a set of questions. Director of finance will have a set of questions. The managing director will have a set of questions. So for them, we create their own data mart. The data mart being much smaller than the data warehouse will give answers a little more quickly again. It's not having to trawl through all the data. 
but also it means that the data marts are separate entities. What one user does with their data mart is not going to affect what another user does. So we have these data marts and strategic marts, which are just the data marts, but in a global overview for the company. The sort of things that the managing director and their people would be interested in. ETL and data marts. ETL stands for extraction, transformation and loading. And these are the three stages you have to go through to create a data warehouse. First of all, you have to extract the data from the in-house databases. So that's getting the data from the original database into the staging area. When it's in the staging area, we've got to transform it to make it useful. So we have to get all the data into the same format, pounds or names, surnames and titles. And then we have to load it into the data warehouse itself. Once we've got it into the data warehouse, we can then worry about the data marts. These are the subsets of the data warehouse. So we have these subsets so that people don't mess with each other's data. Also, it keeps it simpler for the user. In this case, the marketing director is not going to be interested in what the finance director is interested in. So let's keep their queries separate. It makes it simpler. There are fewer options for each person to look at and therefore less chance of them getting lost. The other big advantage is that if one of them comes up with another question, we're trying to solve that problem on a smaller set of data. So it's going to be quicker and easier to solve. Well, you've got the general idea of a data warehouse now. Let's move on to some of the specifics. How is the data held? And it's held as a star, just like you. In the middle, you have a fact. And these, this fact is linked to a number of dimensions. Here I've got four, but you could have three or 23. So, for example, you might have sales. Sales is the item in the middle. So for each sale, you have the member ID, wine ID, area ID and time ID. Time is needed, so you get the idea of trends. And you have that for every sale. Now, that may not be applicable. For example, one member may have bought many things, but this is in second normal form. So even though one member has bought, say, three items, that member's details are now going to be recorded against each sale for each of those sales. And then finally, we could look at it as if it was a constellation. We have the sales, and then we can link the different dimensions together with other facts. So, for example, the wine, the member, or the area. And then, then we've got a proper data warehouse. We can make the constellation as complicated as we want.